Patrick Mahomes has risen above all others in the NFL. Through the 2023 season, he's won three Super Bowls, two MVP campaigns, and three Super Bowl MVPs. He's been awarded six Pro Bowls in the six seasons that he's been a starter in the NFL, not to mention being a two-time first-team All-Pro. In summary, Mahomes is chasing GOAT status and is currently the undisputed best quarterback in the league. With all these accolades, you'd imagine that he was the first overall pick all the way back in 2017. Not only is this not true, but Mahomes dropped all the way down to 10. While this was understandable at the time, as Mahomes was more viewed as a high risk, high reward prospect, I wanted to look back at the nine players selected ahead of Mahomes to see how their careers have turned out thus far. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start all the way to the top and work our way down to Mahomes. To begin the 2017 draft, the Cleveland Browns would go ahead and pick up defensive end Miles Garrett. Garrett has been one of the few draft picks that the Browns didn't miss on. During his seven seasons, he has earned five Pro Bowl nods. He's also been a three-time first-team All-Pro and was even Defensive Player of the Year this past season. With the Browns turning the corner, Garrett is on pace to be a cornerstone for Cleveland and may be an all-time great when it's all said and done, as long as he can keep his hands to himself. Things don't really get controversial until the number two overall pick in Mitro Trubisky, as he was the first quarterback taken. Many scouts believed that Mitch was the most QB ready among the class. The Chiefs would later make the Bears regret ever taking Trubisky, as he never panned out for Chicago. Trubisky would end up not having his fifth year option picked up and would test free agency in 2021. Following stints with Buffalo, Pittsburgh, and now Buffalo again, Mitch at best is viewed as a solid solid backup or a bridge quarterback. I'm sure if given the opportunity, the Bears wouldn't make this mistake twice. Or maybe they would. It's the Chicago Bears. It's not that we're just bad. We're a laughing stock. <laughs> Following Trubisky, the 49ers would get their chance on the clock and would use their selection to draft Solomon Thomas. Thomas never panned out as the pass rusher San Francisco hoped he'd become. After declining his fifth year option, Thomas would sadly tear his ACL very early on in the 2020 season. He had a stint with the Raiders before landing a role with the Jets where he's actually been able to carve out a decent role in the Jets rotation. So maybe things are looking up. Still, never panned out for the Niners. With the fourth overall pick, the Jags would pick up running back Leonard Fournette. In his rookie year, Fournette played a big role in the Jags winning the AFC South in 2017 and was a crucial piece in defeating Pittsburgh in the Divisional. Following that up with a decent showing, the Jags would ultimately fall to Tom Brady's Patriots. After the 2019 season, the Jaguars would shockingly weigh Fournette, with many sources claiming it was Fournette's attitude and behavior that led to him being released. Fortunately for Fournette, he would get picked up by the eventual 2020 champion Buccaneers, earning the nickname Playoff Lenny for his fantastic performances during the playoffs. He would remain with Tampa Bay until after the 2022 season. He was picked up in late 2023 by Buffalo, but didn't really contribute much of anything. Currently, Fournette is a free agent, and given how running backs are treated in the NFL, there is a small chance that Fournette may have played his last down in the NFL. Corey Davis was the first wide receiver taken in the 2017 draft to the Tennessee Titans. Davis would have his breakout year in 2018, grabbing 65 passes for 891 yards and four touchdowns. But this was about the peak that Davis could provide for the Titans, as he would never really meet the expectations that came with being the fifth overall pick, having never earned a single Pro Bowl nod. The Titans would decline his fifth year option and Davis would sign with the Jets in 2021. Unfortunately, Davis would suffer multiple injuries with the Jets and in 2023, he would step away from football entirely as he briefly retired from the NFL. Although he did apply for reinstatement for the 2024 season, Davis is now currently a free agent. With the sixth overall pick, the Jets would snag LSU safety Jamal Adams. Adams would make an immediate impact for the Jets, earning three straight Pro Bowl nods from 2018 to 2020. But due to the 2019 performance, Jamal Adams was already asking for a contract extension. Despite the Jets picking up his fifth year option, Adams would let his frustrations out on social media, calling the Jets all talk, no action. 
After requesting a trade, the Jets would send him to the Seahawks for a first overall pick, among other assets. And while Adams would go on to have the aforementioned Pro Bowl selection and second team All-Pro honors for the Seahawks in 2020, which included a record-breaking 9.5 sacks, the most for any safety in a season ever, Adams would appear to have peaked after this season. Over the next three years, he would battle multiple injuries and would ultimately be released after the 2023 campaign. Adams has since signed a one-year deal with the Titans as he hopes to get back into Pro Bowl form, but now on his third team, it's unlikely that he will get back to form unless he can remain healthy for the majority of the season. With the seventh overall pick, the Chargers would select wideout Mike Williams. Williams would have a rough start to his career, missing training camp and the first half of the season due to a back injury. Following his injury-riddled rookie season, that's a mouthful, Williams would have three subpar seasons until he had a breakout campaign in 2021, where he recorded 76 receptions for 1,146 yards and nine touchdowns, unlocking what the Chargers hoped they'd get more often when they drafted him in 2017. Williams once again battled injuries in 2023, resulting in his lowest numbers since his injury played rookie year. After being released by LA, Williams would sign a one-year deal with the Jets. If he can stay healthy, Williams will have plenty of opportunities with Aaron Rodgers at the helm. But given that they're both coming off of pretty catastrophic injuries, it's more likely that one or the other is going to get hurt before they can really hit their peak. Christian McCaffrey would be the next player coming off the board going to the Carolina Panthers with the 8th overall pick. CMC would immediately be the do-all versatile player for the Panthers, catching an astonishing 80 passes in his rookie season. He would follow this up with an even more impressive 2018 year, recording 107 receptions for a total of 1,965 scrimmage yards and 13 total touchdowns. In 2019, CMC would get even better somehow. He would rush for nearly 1,400 yards and 15 touchdowns on the ground, while having another 1,000 yards catching and another four pass catching touchdowns on 116 grabs. This insane two year stretch would be followed up however with back to back injury plagued seasons. McCaffrey would turn it around somewhat in 2022 but wouldn't really kick it up a notch until being traded to the 49ers and would immediately turn into the piece the Niners had been missing. CMC would play a big role in Shanahan's offense, earning Offensive Player of the Year in 2023 and finishing third in MVP voting. At just 27 years old, McCaffrey could very well still have a few great years left, especially in an offense as creative as the one they have in San Francisco. Okay guys, we go from potentially the best pick thus far in the draft to arguably the biggest bust in the draft. With the ninth overall pick, the Bengals would go on to select John Ross III. Ross wasn't initially a very high prospect for the draft, but that all changed when he broke the 40-yard dash. The Bengals ultimately would gamble on John Ross, as the idea of pairing the quote-unquote fastest man in the NFL with a superstar in AJ Green and up-and-coming slot receiver Tyler Boyd, honestly, had things worked out, that would have been a monstrous trio in the NFL for years to come. Sadly, this never came to fruition, as in his rookie year, Ross was deep in the depth chart, being as low as 6th in the lineup. In his only touch, not even just catch, run, his only touch, Ross would run for 12 yards and ultimately fumble. Injuries and distrust with head coach Marvin Lewis proved to be the end for Ross's rookie year. 2019 looked to be Ross's best year yet, having back-to-back season-high games to begin the campaign. In his first two games in 2019, Ross totaled 270 yards. Unfortunately, this would be the peak of Ross's career, as he would deal with more injuries, which kept him from continuing his great 2019 start. Ross would be a healthy scratch from there on out, although he would ultimately have a season-ending injury in practice. Ross would sign with the Giants in 2021 and wouldn't be picked up by another team until 2023 where the Chiefs would take a chance on him but would briefly retire before the season started. After unretiring, the Chiefs would immediately release the former ninth overall pick. Ross appears to be on his last legs after being picked up by the Eagles for the upcoming 2024 season. While there have been flashes, it's crazy to think who was picked up right before Ross in CMC and who was picked up 
after Ross in Patrick Mahomes. While there's no doubt Mahomes would be the number one overall pick in a draft do-over, the Browns and the Panthers, and even the Jets to an extent, can at least say they got their money's worth. The same cannot be said about the rest. While it's hard to imagine now, had the Bears selected Mahomes instead of Trubisky, I wonder how different the NFL would look. That's going to do it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Once again, this has been Triple DS. We're on the road to 2,000 subs. Thank you guys so much for your support. And until next time, shoop boy!